I'm James Swanick. This is the Alcohol Free Lifestyle Podcast, where you learn to live a life of health, wealth, love, and happiness. At Victoria English 1111. Lady, you don't know beep about beep. Shut up. Your kids must be so, oh, 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 proud of you, LOL. Mother of the Year Award right there. She's just a drunk pretending she knows what she's talking about. Alcohol is poison, but so is Botox. What is this rubbish that I just shared with you? Well, these are some comments that James and I receive on social media. From trolls? Maybe. But according to their comments, they are proud members of Alcoholics Anonymous. I often get asked the question, Do you guys hate AA? I'm going to answer that today. And I'm going to come back with a question of my own. Thanks for joining me today. Besides being at Victoria English 1111, my name is Victoria English. I'm the head coach here at Alcohol Free Lifestyle. They call me Coach V in the program. I'm also called Mom. Friend, daughter, lots of things. But boy, oh boy, I don't think I've ever been called such things as I have been <laughs> on social media. It's okay. Um, I'm not interested in popularity. This isn't high school. I am committed to my message, as is James. Part of why James and I are such a good fit is because our our visions are aligned around living an alcohol-free life. For starters, I want to let you know that I am very grateful to AA. I went to my first AA meeting when I was about 15 years old. I went with my dad to witness him pick up his one-year chip. He was excited about the chip. I was excited about the cake. I was also um, really cautiously optimistic that I had my dad back. Because like many families, uh, mine had been damaged by his drinking. And you know what? Over 40 years later, I still have my dad. That's pretty amazing. He's 85 now. And he has been sober for all those years. I'm also grateful to AA because it helped me. Back in the days before much social media, before there was really anything else besides AA. I went to my first AA meeting, uh, probably around 2011 or so. And I met some incredible women and, and I was able to string together some, some time, some sober time. And I don't know if I would have ever gotten that without those rooms and the support of those very loving people. I always wanted to know more. Now, any aa or worth their weight in chips would say, well, it works if you work it. And we'll get to that. I did work it. And it worked. Sort of. But before we go on, you know, when they ask, 
do you hate AA? You can probably gather that no, I don't hate AA. James doesn't hate AA. My question is, why do some AA folks hate us? Now, I'm fluent or semi-fluent in a few other languages. My native language is English. I am quite conversational in Spanish, and I'm pretty fluent in AA because I have been to hundreds and hundreds of meetings, and I have read the book many times, and much of it's supporting literature. And so this kind of trips me out. And if you're listening to this and you're an aa or who has said these things, I, I invite you to just have a moment of reflection and ask yourself why. But AA does say in its 10th tradition that no AA group or member should ever, in such a way as to implicate AA, express any opinion on outside controversial issues, particularly those of politics, alcohol reform, or sectarian religion. The Alcoholics Anonymous groups oppose no one. Concerning such matters, they can express no views whatsoever. So, you know, I'm not particularly active in AA anymore. I still go to some meetings now and then. I like them. I think you get some some good skills in there. And um, yeah, I, I like lots of things about it. But I don't bash other paths to becoming alcohol-free. You notice that? <laughs> it's because I paid attention and I check my ego. Just something to think about. I'm just over here keeping my side of the street clean. In the big book, alcohol is often referred to as alcoholism, is referred to as a disease. So, you know, one thing that gets me curious is if it is a disease, why aren't all paths to recovery welcome? Honestly. You know, when I had breast cancer, uh, it was very aggressive and my doctors wanted to use all the things, all the tools, all the weapons in their arsenal to help me beat it. And here at Alcohol Free Lifestyle, we subscribe to that. Did you know that we have members who are active in AA and some of them stopped telling others about this Project 90 thing because they were criticized for doing it. Criticized for doing it. They were told that they just needed to work harder on their own program. We don't do that. We don't do that. We welcome all the things. People do somatic healing. They do therapy. They do EMDR. They do AA. They do smart recovery. They do lots and lots of things. Because alcohol is a very formidable foe. And so we call in all the reinforcements that our members deem necessary. Why do we charge for this? Why isn't it free? Well, actually, did you pay for this podcast that you're hearing right now? James didn't make it for free. 
It costs him money to bring this podcast to you. Most of our stuff is free. The more you know, right? We've got stuff on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, the podcast. We have PDFs. We have so many different things. What is coaching? Why do we get paid? Well, in AA, you can get a sponsor, and that can be great or not. Every experience is different. It's it's subjective. Uh, But certainly there is value in people struggling with their drinking, being around other people who have struggled with their drinking, which we have in here, by the way, because all of our coaches have also struggled with their drinking. Um, However, the sponsors... May, I mean, some of them do work in the recovery field. Some of them do. But for the most part, they're not trained. They have what I guess you might call life experience and on-the-job training because they've done enough AA that they qualify to sponsor others. So what is coaching? Why, Why do Sarah and I call ourselves coaches? Why is James a coach? Well, coaching is not counseling. We do not give counseling. We don't help you with your psychological struggles. We don't help you with your marriage, grief, things like that. We can talk about it, but we can't advise. We are not psychologists. We are not therapists. We do not claim to be. We do not uh, address medical issues. By the way, back in when I went to my first AA meeting, Um, there were sponsors who told people that taking their antidepressants was going to, uh, qualify them as not really being sober. I'll just put that out there. So yeah, coaches don't do that. Not one who wants to keep their license anyway. We're also not consultants. We don't give you financial advice, business advice, anything like that. We also don't really share our opinions. The coaching that we do in our Project 90 calls is based on research, science, so many different things. We don't just throw around the word neuroplasticity and not know what we're talking about. We've studied it. We're not doctors. We're not scientists. But we do study it. And we stay abreast of different research and new things coming out around the science of addiction, the science of habit, the science of change, and how we can implement that into our coaching. We also have no opinion on your medication. That's between you and your doctor. Hi, I'm James Swanick. Have you downloaded my free alcohol freedom formula yet? If not, you can go to alcoholfreelifestyle.com forward slash guide. You can download it. It will outline the same process that we walk our clients through in our flagship 90 day stop drinking program. You'll also get an email from me each day with tips and tricks to reduce or stop drinking, to improve your health, nutrition, mobility, and lots of other great mindset techniques. That's alcoholfreelifestyle.com forward slash guide. Now, when I became certified to coach around alcohol, I clearly had quite a bit of personal experience with um, alcohol misuse. But um, coaching is different. That was my training. And it was a very intense program. I had to go through a lot of hoops. And at last count, I have about 8,000 hours of coaching time under my belt. So yes, we do get paid for this. We also put a lot of effort 
and continuing education into it. And so just like other professionals get paid to do their work, we get paid to do ours. Unlike many professionals in many other fields, or even alcohol-free coaching, we put so much of our knowledge out into the universe for free. Because as the 12th step in AA mentions, once we have had an awakening, they call it a spiritual awakening, but once we've had an awakening and changed our relationship with alcohol, we feel the need to serve and help others. And so you see, it can be both. We do a lot of this for free because we care about people who are suffering because we ourselves have suffered. So back to the disease thing. In AA, they do mention it. They, they do refer to alcoholism as a disease. And that is a theory. There's the disease model. Um, I get it. I'm not completely opposed to it. There's a choice model, other things. But, you know, it's when an AA person comes at us that way, or someone from our program shares with their AA friends that they're doing this and they are kind of condemned. I don't get it because how is alcoholism the only disease in which if the treatment doesn't work, the patient is blamed? How is that? I saw people die during my time at AA. They were in and out and in and out. And look, that is a really dangerous thing because sometimes they don't make it back. But the message might be from AA, you have to be more honest. You have to work your program harder. What if there's something else that can help somebody who's suffering? I'm a breast cancer survivor. I had a very aggressive subtype, triple negative. So my doctors were not finger pointing at each other and arguing over what I should do. They collaborated and said, we're going to do all the things, anything that might, even if it's incrementally uh, or by 2%, if it might increase her odds of survival. Let's do it. And I'm, I'm serious about that. There were certain things combining radiation with this medication that could lower my risk of recurrence in study, you know, theoretically by say 2%. And we were like, let's do it because we were dealing with those sorts of numbers. And so I ask you, if you are dealing with something as Awful is alcohol use disorder. Why does it have to be just one way? Why? We believe that it can be Project 90 and fill in the blank. You get to fill in the blank. And you can consult with your doctor, your therapist, your family, whomever. And say, what else might I need? Some people just do this for the 90 days. And that's cool too. But do you really think as a coach, as a loving, caring coach and a professional that I'm going to tell my members to, to not do therapy while they're working with me or to not read quit lit books while they're listening to me, working with me, or to not listen to other podcasts? While they're in this program, that would be reckless, wouldn't it? But again, I'm a professional. So I know I know the rules. 
I also am not so egotistical to think that our way is the only way. Our invitation to listeners, to you, to anyone who comes across us on social media is find your path. It might be our path. It might be our path combined with other things. It might be a path completely separate from what we do here. But find a path. Get on it. Stay on it. Find people to walk with you. In matters such as this, there is such a need for compassion. Anyone who has struggled with their drinking lacks self-compassion when they start out. So for our listeners, I would like you to know that we welcome you. We welcome you to find out more about our program. Even if you're doing other things too. Because our bottom line looks like helping as many people as possible. Sometimes that translates into dollars. Sometimes it doesn't. As I said, this podcast is free. We do this because we care. If you have questions about our program, I invite you to book that discovery call. You'll talk with me or another one of our awesome coaches. It's 15 minutes. Come as you are. We have a niche. We work with high-performing people. It's not about the amount of money they make. It's about the way that they tend to be wired and the way that they tend to be like-minded in many different areas of life. And so when they come into our group, they can finally exhale because they feel like they belong. After feeling like they didn't for so long. Some of them do AA. Some of them went to AA a few times and stopped. I'm not going to tell them, go do another 20 meetings because they might not make it through and they may never go back and they may never get help. And I know nobody wants that. And so, yes, we work with a specific type of community, a specific type of individual. And you know what? It's something that didn't exist before James Swanick started it. We've helped thousands of people successfully change their relationship with alcohol. We celebrate all paths to an alcohol-free life. I hope that you will too. And I hope that if you are struggling that today's episode will be an impetus for you to start celebrating you, your path to an alcohol-free life. I look forward to hearing from you. Until next time, take good care and have an awesome day.